Hello and welcome. This time we are talking about what we can do with our memories, eh? with our triggered memories, when we can select the point in time when we want to have it stored in the memory. Eh? We will see the, the results are a bunch of different possibilities, eh? so-called flip-flops. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the minimalistic uh, sandals, uh, flip-flop on the beach. Uh, no, no, flip-flops are different types of, of memories. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, So, let's have a look. Let's draw our first flip-flop. Let's assume this is our memory yeah, with S and R. Here we have Q, and Q inverted, okay. and here we have the clock line, C. Okay. So the output is Q and Q inverted, and we feed this back, vice versa. Okay, let's have a look what is happening here. Yeah? Let's say here we have T. These are the times here. And let's say this here is our C. Uh -huh. Here. This is our clock signal and it's toggling between 0 and 1 all the time all the time it's toggling okay since we are here triggering on the rising edge yeah these are the important edges here I'll make them thick uh, these are the important important edges I will draw this line, this point in times, to the other diagrams, and it's easier. Let's say, first, when we're starting, the memory is not set, so this is at 1, okay? and then, with a slight delay, since this is 1, with a slight delay, this will be set and will change to set. Yeah? This delay here, yeah? this is here some simply delay time, okay? Switching time of the element. And the memory content is changing at exactly the same time. So also with a little bit later, a little bit later than the rising edge, uh, to one. It will stay there until the next rising edge. Then here we have one, so it will reset, so it will disappear, also with a latency. And later, here it will be reappearing again with the same latency. So we can see the output toggling. This is how this would look like. So here we have a period time of the clock signal. And here we have a period time of the memory. TQ. And as we can see, TC must change two times, yeah? two times rising edge, then we are at the beginning again. So TQ is twice as high as TC. Yeah? TQ, T 
TQ is 2 times TC. This means the frequency of Q is only half the frequency of the, of the clock signal. So this can be used as frequency divider. Okay? Frequency divider. Since the output is talking with every impulse on the input, this is called T flip flop. Or toggle flip flop. Okay? T flip flop or toggle flip flop. There is a certain symbol to this. Looking like this. There's a C, Q, Q inverted. Okay. One possibility, it's exactly this, yeah, in only one symbol. And an, another possibility would be to trigger on the falling edge. So the symbol looks exactly the same. But here we have this small circle. This is rising edge trigger, falling edge trigger. And this is what is happening. Usually D flip flops do also allow to do nothing. So there's an enable input for enabling this toggling. What is how is the content looks like? So this is this SR. Exactly the same as here. And here we do have blocker elements, which will prohibit the toggling. Okay. These are ends. Here we are connected, and here we are connected vice versa to these ends. So it's looking pretty much like before. So there's the C input. Yeah. But now we have a T input, toggle input. Yeah. And this T input is enabling the toggling. Only if it's one, these signals will get to S and R input. Yeah. If it's zero, the end is blocking. Yeah. So this is actually how a T flip flop usually looks like. However, the function is the same. I can only select if it's shell toggle or not. Symbol, also close to the above one. There's Q, not Q, here is C, and here we have the toggle input. Okay. Toggle enable input. T flip flop. First flip flop, let's say. Toggle flip flop. Very close related to this T flip flop is the JK flip flop. I will also show you. I will leave this here on the top. Bend it here a little bit. So we will draw it exactly the same way like the toggle. The toggle flip flop. There's the memory. Same thing like then here. S R Q not Q. Yeah. There are the blockers. So again two end elements. There's the clock line. See. The outputs will be vice versa fed back. Here we have Q, not Q. And now I have two enables, J, K. J, K flip flop. This is how this looks like. Symbol is also clear. Yeah. Let's draw the symbol before we 
are thinking about what it will do or what it does. Symbol of JK flip flop. So, uh, what does it do? Okay. What does it do? Let's think Q. Let's say the memory is not set. If the memory is not set, then he will have a zero. He will have a zero. And here we have a one, here we have a one. If K, J and K is not, are not there, C can do whatever it wants, it will not change anything. If K is there, then we get here maybe a one, yeah, but it will not change anything. If J is there, then we get here a one, then we have here a one, and with the rising edge, we are going to set this. Huh? So if J is here, and it's not set, we will set it. Okay. If k is then not here, let's see if we have the other way around. Then here is a 1, here is a 0. Yeah. Now, if k is not here, it will not change anything. Yeah. Because if there is 0, it will be 0, nothing is changed. So the J input alone actually works like a set. The K input, we already thought about this. The K input, if it's not set, yeah, and K is 1, the green is 0, so it will stay 0. Doesn't really matter. If it's set and K is 1, it will re reset. Okay. So the K input alone is working like a reset. So we have now three different possibilities. Nothing, yeah, nothing changes. No talking, nothing. Only J, memory will be set. Only K, memory will be reset. And if J and K are here, so if both are set to one, we will see a talking. So with a JK flip-flop, I can select what the thing is doing okay so it's a uh, quite versatile huh? i can use it as set line i can use it as reset line or i can select toggle hmm? that's great jk flip-flop and also pretty much the same Same but different, yeah, like always. Two ends again. And then here we have the clock input, here we have S and R latch, yeah. the output, the feeding back, vice versa, everything the same. Here have an input, and this is also affecting the other end. So it's just almost looking like the T. Yeah? But now I'm inverting this. Ooh. Yeah? It's different. And now it's no T for Toggle, now it's a D. And this delay, ah, it's delay. I already said it. Yeah? This D stands for delay. Okay? Delay. Yeah? What does it mean? Actually, if D is here and it's not set, it will be set. Okay? Because this end is working. If it's set, nothing is changed. If D is not here, it's not set, nothing is changed. If D is not here and it's set, it will be reset. So actually what appears on Q is like D, but delayed to the rising edge of C. Yeah? This is where the name comes from, because it's delayed until C has a rising edge. Symbol. Symbol. 
symbol for this. Should be no surprise. D. A D flip flop. Hmm? Delay flip flop. Oh. Well, basically, these are the different type of flip flops. Huh? There's the, I'll write the names JK flip flop. flip flop and the toggle flip flop the T flip flop these are different type of memories the SR is also sometimes called or very often called SR flip flop okay but it's just a ledge So these are the different type of flip-flops. You see, it's just external uh, logic around the memory. Next time we're talking about a special flip-flop, we're talking about the master-slave flip-flop okay? and why we need it. These are the base flip-flops. Next time we use two flip-flops and make one out of it. Why? We will see. For now, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.